Yes, I'm Naveen, uh, and I'm going to talk about our work on enabling programmable packet uh, scheduling on today's high-speed switches using a very old abstraction called calendar queues. Uh, this work was done by several, in collaboration of several people at uh, University of Washington, NUS, Barefoot Networks, and NYU. So many scheduling algorithms today require careful ordering of packets inside the network at switches in order to enable rich application guarantees such as a fair bandwidth allocation or timely delivery of packets using earliest deadline first scheduling or even optimizing for flow completion time using something like shortest remaining processing time scheduling. And generally these policies are implemented using a priority queue with static priorities. Uh, by static priorities I mean a packet's priority or rank, which it determines its DQ order, is computed by the ingress pipeline before being buffered in the traffic manager. And the priority of this packet does not change until the packet is transmitted out of this buffer. However, these static priorities are sometimes insufficient uh, to implement some of these scheduling algorithms faithfully. To make it clear, let me show an example of least slack time first scheduling, where each packet has a slack value that denotes the time available until its desired delivery. And at any point of time, we want to dequeue the packet with the smallest slack. And to achieve this in a static priority mechanism, you enqueue a packet with a rank that is equal to current time plus slack, right? Uh, so if a packet at time t0 comes with slack one, you enqueue it with rank one. Uh, time t1 with slack two, uh, you enqueue it priority three, and, and so on. And the intuition being, if you have two packets that arrive at the same time, you are going to dequeue the packet with the smaller slack first. And if you have two packets with the same slack, you want to dequeue the one which arrived earlier. And as you can realize, ranks gradually increase over time. Right? As packets are dequeued and new packets are enqueued, the range or the window of packets or packet ranks gradually increases until you sort of exhaust uh, the priority levels you have, as long as you have buff packets enqueued. And this is not just common to this, uh, this sort of scheduling mechanism. Other algorithms such as fair queuing or early deadline first, or even a norm word conserving algorithm such as leaky bucket filter have this property as well. So what we need is a mechanism that supports dynamic priorities, which is like periodic escalation of priorities of packets that are already in the buffer. And ideally, we want this to be implemented, implementable at in high-speed switches today. Right? And an old abstraction called calendar queues seems a good fit for this. And it was proposed in the late 80s for processing events in a discrete event simulator. And it's essentially a bucketed priority queue with constant time inserts and deletes for common uh, distributions. And you can think of it as like a desk calendar, which consists of multiple days. And events are scheduled by specifying a future day or date. At any given time, uh, packets from the current day are dequeued and processed in sorted order. And once all events of a particular day, of current day, are uh, sort of dequeued, you move on to the next day, which is implicitly escalating the priority of all other days or packets enqueued or events enqueued. And we can then make the previous day available that was just emptied to reuse at a lower priority. So we call this reuse. So a key insight in this work is to combine this abstraction of calendar queues along with the programmability aspect of today's reconfigurable switches to realize these sort of scheduling algorithms uh, on today's hardware. And so the calendar queues provides, provide us with the dynamic properties here, and the programmable pipeline maintains the scheduling algorithm state required to compute the rank and so on. So in the rest of this talk, I'll briefly go over the background of reconfigurable switches, uh, introduce our abstraction of calendar queues, programmable calendar queues, and then show how we can realize the scheduling algorithms using uh, programmable calendar queues. Then I'll show how we can implement these in hardware and go over a couple of case studies. So in these reconfigurable switches, packets generally are processed by an ingress pipeline, which consists of some amount of uh, lookup memory or uh, registers for mutable state, and also some ALUs for doing simple computation, which can then decide which queue inside the traffic manager to enqueue this packet into. Several such, or a bunch of such queues are attached to an outgoing egress port, which can be configured using the switch CPU. 
And today, inside this traffic manager, only a handful such policies are available, such as strict priority or just round robining between the queues uh, and limited support of pausing. And as you can see, this is somewhat restricted to achieve the type of scheduling algorithms we want to realize. And so we can do this using programmable calendar queues, which are nothing, which are calendar queues along with a programmable and stateful rank computation, along with a configurable day duration and a rotation policy. So the way it works is, say we have some number of FIFO queues in our traffic manager. We'll map each day of our calendar queue to a FIFO queue. Right. Uh, we'll bucketize packet ranks into individual days. So for example, day, zero can, can, day one can contain packet ranks from 0 to 10, day two packet ranks 10 to 20, and so on. And we are going to dequeue packets from the earliest day first by simply ordering them in strict priority. As all the packets of a particular queue are drained, uh, we'll move on to the next day. And when this happens, we are going to reuse this queue for a future day. Right? So given this abstraction, how can we realize the algorithms I talked about using this, uh, these programmable candidate queues? So any algorithm has to take three key decisions. The first of which is calculate when a packet arrives, which day to enqueue this packet into. And we call this the rank compute. And this is a measure of how far in the future this packet should be scheduled. Next, the algorithm has to decide when to move on to the next day. And this we call a queue rotation. This can happen logically when the current queue is empty, that you have no more packets to dequeue. You move on to the next day. And we call this a logical calendar queue. And it lets us implement various work conserving scheduling algorithms. Or we could do this queue rotation periodically based on wall clock time, like say every x microseconds and so on. And this we call a physical calendar queue. And it lets us implement various non work conserving scheduling algorithms as well. Finally, whenever such a queue rotation happens, the algorithm must update its own state and adjust its enqueuing behavior so that its algorithm invariants are maintained on such rotation. Right? So let's take an example of implementing fair queuing using this sort of a mechanism. And we are going to emulate the classical bit by bit round robin fair queuing scheme, where let's say we have hypothetical ideal per flow queues. Right? And in every round, we are going to send out a, a quantum of bytes, let's say it's a round size. And we are going to map each round into a day of the calendar queue. And we are, I'm showing the calendar queues at the bottom, right? The rank computation then is straightforward. You take the number of bytes sent by each flow and divide it by the round size, which could be either 1,500 bytes, two kilobytes, or anything like that. And so if a flow has a packet that fits within the first round, it gets enqueued into day one. If it's a larger packet that doesn't fit into round one, and fits in round two, it will be enqueued into day two, and so on and so forth. Right? In this case, the queue rotation happens whenever the current queue is empty. And it signifies that all active flows have sent out at least uh, the quantum of bytes in round one. Right? And so when this happens, you essentially can use the day one queue to, re uh, to store packets for the future days. But when this happens, the fair queuing algorithm must update its state to show, to take account of the fact that the round number has increased by one and that it cannot enqueue any more packets in round one. All right. Let's take a look at another like, more complex example, which is earliest deadline first, where every packet has an inbuilt deadline. And you want to, at any time, you want to select the packet with the shortest deadline first. And here we are going to bucket individual packet deadlines into queues based on day duration. So let's say, again, we have same FIFO queues. We are going to say 0 to 10 microsecond uh, bucket uh, packet deadlines are in day 1, 10 to 20 in day 2, and so on. But in addition to that, we have to keep a drift, a keep attack of drift, which is the, the position of our sort of current head with relative to the calendar queue head. And that will become clear as I uh, show the other details. The rank computation is simply the packet deadline plus the drift divided by the bucket size, which is 10 microseconds in this case. Again, so in order to preserve the 
uh, word conserving nature of this algorithm, we rotate to the next queue whenever the current queue is empty. Right? So in this case, when zero and five packets go off, uh, the next days now correspond to the new uh, b deadlines of zero, 10 micro. Yeah, so here uh, we need to keep track of the drift, which will depend on, based on how much time we spend in the last queue. So if we spend uh, more than 10 microseconds, our effective deadline is now minus five to five microseconds. And if we spend less time in the previous day, our effective deadlines are 15 to 25 microseconds. So this state uh, adjustment has to be done by the algorithm upon a queue rotation. Right. So let's see how we can implement such a mechanism in, in today's hardware switches. And we take advantage of a couple of features. First is the ability to keep mutable switch state on the both egress and ingress pipelines, and the ability to recirculate special packets inside the pipeline. More importantly, we have to be able to change priority queues when these rotations happen. So first, the, both the ingress and the egress pipelines maintain the head and tail pointers for our calendar queue, which is uh, starting at which point the head, the DQ uh, starts. Uh, since day one is the head right now, it has the highest priority, the next queue has low priority, and all other queues are paused. When all queues, uh, when all packets from day one are DQ'd, the egress pipeline notices this and initiates a rotation. And it does so by creating a marker packet, updating its own variable head pointer, and then sending the marker packet, recirculating it back to the ingress pipeline, which then can stop enqueuing any more packets into day one and updating its own head pointer. But while this was happening, there could be a packet in the pipeline that made its way into the day one queue. So to fully drain out the queue, uh, the ingress pipeline again puts the marker packet in, in day one or the queue one and waits for it to be re uh, received by the egress pipeline again. When this marker packet reaches the egress pipeline, we can for sure say that day one is empty and we can start reusing it for future days. And this happens by, again, recirculating it to the egress pipeline, which then can update its tail pointer and then reuse the queue for day n plus one. And at this point, it also updated the queue's priority, the next day being high priority and the next to next day being low priority and every other queue being paused. So this can be efficiently realized uh, through a combination of data plane support, by mod which can enable modifying queues, queues priority or unpause and pause status. And this is expected to be available in next generation of programmable switches. And a limited version of this functionality is already available for the priority flow control mechanism. Even today, we can implement a le less responsive version of these calendar queues using the control plane. And in our prototype, we use the switch CPU to update these queue priorities, although at a slightly higher latency. There are a lot more details in the paper where I talk about, where we talk about approximations involved in these programmable calendar queues and how we can increase the range of calendar queues using a hierarchical uh, data structure. And also talk about the expressiveness and limitations of these programmable calendar queues, what you cannot, should you, uh, cannot implement, can implement in these. And also some hardware prototype results. So let me go over a couple of case studies uh, using these uh, programmable calendar queues. And the first one of which is co-flow scheduling. Because many applications today require optimizing the performance of the collection of flows instead of just single flows. And prior work has shown that ordering co-flows from smallest to largest gives close to optimal results. So we implement such a scheme using LSTF scheduling on programmable calendar queues where the slack of any packet is set to the expected finish time of the largest subflow inside the co-flow. And at any hop, the packet with the shortest slack is sent out first. So we implement this in a, a three-level factory test bed with both co-flow and background traffic. And each switch port implemented a programmable candidate with 32 FIFO queues. 
And we compared it with DC, DCB over drop tail queues and fair giving uh, behavior. And we report, measured and reported the, the co flow completion time. So here on the x-axis, uh, I have the network load. As we increase the network load, what sort of, on the y-axis, what sort of uh, co-flow completion time we are getting. And so there are two key takeaways. First, of course, as expected, uh, shortest remaining processing time, which is shown by the green and the yellow bars, is definitely much better than either drop tail or fair queuing. But the more interesting point is, we are able to approximate shortest remaining processing time, uh, the one in orange, very closely with the green line, which is ideal shortest remaining process time using ideal priority queues with infinite levels. Our next case study is burst-friendly burst friendly fair queuing, which sort of demonstrates the flexibility of calendar queues as well. I showed you earlier where we can emulate fair queuing the bit-by-bit round-robin scheme at cores granularity, but it is often desirable to permit a burst of packets to go through for better tail latency, for especially short flows. So this sacrifices fa fairness at short time scale, but maintains it at long time scale as follows. If we have like round numbers one to nine, an ideal fair queuing would send out packets at equal intervals on each round, whereas a bursty fair queuing would allow some packets to be sent out in earlier rounds, but then not allow packets in the later rounds. And you can implement such a customizable scheme easily using calendar queues. So, we evalu again evaluated this in the same sort of a test bed uh, where I showed the <clears throat> network load on x-axis and flow completion time in uh, microseconds on the x-axis. First, comparing ideal fair queuing, which would be implemented by, say, ideal priority queues, and the red line which shows fair queuing implemented on top of our calendar queues. And you can see we can do a very close, accurate emulation of uh, fair queuing using calendar queues. Next, we can go even better by introducing this burst friendliness uh, that reduces the, both the average and the tail completion time for short flows. So to summarize, I hope to convince, I have <laughs> convinced you that static priority mechanisms are sometimes inefficient to implement a class of scheduling algorithms, and an old approach, calendar queues, are a better fit for these. More importantly, they can be implemented on today's multi-pipeline high-speed switches, and they're inherently scalable to high bandwidths irrespective of the number of flows. And in conjunction with a, a programmable pipeline, we can implement a wide range of scheduling algorithms using these. Uh, with that, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello, uh, Danny Chin from Princeton University. Thanks mm -hmm. very much for the great talk. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder that in your original paper, you used 32 q for evaluation, but in reality, today's network into the switches, if we really want to do priority queue for every single pore, you usually get only five or seven different priorities. So what would be the yep. impact if you only have five or seven queues? Yes. Uh, so, today's switches, I think, if you look at any of the top of the line, uh, switch, uh, like line rate switches, most of them have at least 32 queues per port. So, our most of the evaluation was done on 32 queues port. But if you have, say, very little, say, very small amount of queues, there are two uh, sort of trade offs you can have. You can make your bucket sizes large, which means your approximation is very bad. <laughs> Or if you reduce your bucket size to a small value and you're limited by the number of queues, which means you can't schedule packets too far in the, into the future, which again is bad for approximation. So there's sort of a, a balance in here. Yeah, having them. There's been a, another intricate issue. In today's switches, you have to use the CPU to switch the queues. So if you have five or seven, does that mean you have to switch them very frequently? Like yes. How frequent? Like every yes. second or what? Right, so that's where uh, if you were to do it using the switch CPU, uh, it won't be as responsive. You can't switch priority so fast. And that's why we are relying on the fact that the next generation of switches will allow you to change priorities on the data path. And that will be a, in the order of nanoseconds, and that will be much faster. Right. Thank you very much. Sure. Hello. Test it. Alexander Dietmiller from ETA Zurich. Thanks for the talk. Um, you just mentioned the bucket sizes. Mm -hmm. Can you provide some insight on how to choose uh, op a good bucket size and what are the penalties if I choose it wrongly? Yes. So, yeah, the answer to that is very algorithm, uh, very scheduling protocol specific. So, if you choose a very small packet size or like small round size, uh, the one downside to that is 
your range of the, on the calendar queue will be very limited, which means if a packet comes in that is too far in the future, you either drop it or you do a bad job of ordering it inside your calendar queue. So, and the impact of that would depend on how the scheduling algorithm reacts to it. For fair queuing, dropping a packet is fine, as long as you have sufficient buffer. Even for, say, earliest deadline first, if a packet is too far in the future, it's maybe okay to drop it because it will be, get, it will be retransmitted and by the time it's retransmitted, the deadline is still, there's some, still some slack to it. On the other hand, you can, say, increase the, the range of a calendar queue by having a very large packet size, which means that within each day or round, you're doing a lot of inversions or reorderings. Right? So it's a careful balance of choosing this uh, round size or day duration and so on. Right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Hi, Albert from ETH. Mm -hmm. uh, Great uh, work, thanks. Yeah. I see it a bit as a generalization of the rotating priorities yep. in the AFQ algorithm. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering whether, like as you mentioned, there's this issue that in order to rotate the queue, the queue priorities, you need to do it from the control plane uh, in yes. today's switches. In do you have an, an intuition of the impact in performance that this can have in, in for, yes. for, for the different performance objectives that one might Correct, might yes. So in the worst case, you would have to do a priority change for every packet going through. And if, you're, if the priority change operation from a control plane takes order of microseconds, that means essentially you are limited by that amount of throughput. You can, you can only, if you're doing a correct job of ordering packets, you can only do it every so microseconds. Mm -hmm. uh, and so clearly that wouldn't really scale to uh, you can say like say terabit terabit switches unless each single round or day lasts in the order of microseconds and that's where we are relying on the fact that the next generation switches, next generation of switches will have this on the data plane where in nanoseconds you can switch change the priority of uh, uh, of a single queue where you are depositing packets. Yeah. Thanks. Thank the speaker. Mm -hmm.